So GRASS basically is a C project uh, written in C. Um, as Marcus said, it's over 30 years of development. And it's quite interesting that actually a lot of the, the basic C functions that were developed over 30 years ago are actually still there, are still working. So it's a quite stable source base, um, even though it has changed a lot over time. Very early on, shell scripts were integrated into the GRASS source base and were used as a way to kind of glue together different parts of GRASS to, to, to for some task. But we've had over the time appearance of new generations of developers used to coding in different languages and we have the arrival of new languages as well. And so now we have different application programming interfaces to GRASS and the aim of this presentation is kind of to give you a quick overview of these different APIs so that you have a notion of, of what you can do with GRASS, how you can program with GRASS. So actually the first thing I'm going to say is that GRASS in itself is an API. GRASS was built up following the Unix philosophy, uh, the KISS principle. Each GRASS, individual GRASS mo module does one thing, does it well, uh, and has defined parameters. Marcus just showed you how you can look at them in different ways, including as WPS, uh, HTML descriptions. But so each module can almost be see, seen as a function that you can then chain together to build your own <coughs> application. When you create output from a, as a map from a, a GRASS module, it is automatically stored in the, this <coughs> database, the GRASS database, or as KISS files as, or whatever format you want to, but normally in the GRASS format in the GRASS database. And other types of outputs from modules can be stored either in files or you can actually pipe them through the standard uh, um, input, standard output flow uh, from one module to another. So just chaining these models can be considered uh, writing a program. And here you see a very simple, uh, very simplistic as well program saying, let's test if uh, any of our points fall into, let's say, very roughly uh, designed flood risk areas. Uh, and you have the chaining of a series of, of commands that actually take an elevation model that estimate out of that where streams are most probable probably to be, or water accumulation is going to be most uh, important. Transform that to a vector, buffer it, and then check which of our points, in this case we're using capping grounds, fall into a 500 meter radius around these streams. Yeah. So you can really easily chain grass commands, and a lot of the grass commands really allow you to work with very basic functions. And so you can chain those and write your own programs in a certain way just by doing that. <coughs> when you do that, the memory handling and the garbage collection, if you want to, is handled by the system because each model is an autonomous program. So once the model is over, everything is just freed after that by the system. Error handling is done by each model. So if a grass as such is not an, uh, a standalone or not a monolith monolithic application, so when you have a model that crashes, it's only the model that crashes. You don't have a whole program that crashes. And actually, you can call GRASS and the modules through any language that can call, do system calls. Uh, and here you see two examples from Python and, and, and C. Uh, so if you want to, you can integrate calls to Python modules within an application that you write within any uh, program in any language. So this is one way to program Beamman for GRASS. It has some, let's say, disadvantages, obviously, that you sometimes using these system calls, you need to really be uh, informed about how to handle shell expansion. And it's not always easy to handle output of the models when they're not mapped. You really already have to know how to do that in your respective programming languages. And so, a Python scripting li uh, library was developed to ease, let's say, these system calls to GRASS modules. These are essentially, and the, the entire library is built around subprocess popen uh, within Python, and generally almost all the different functions of that library are just wrappers around that. 
and you have specific functions to handle different types of input output. You, know, you can read output line by line, you can put it out as Python dictionaries, or you can actually work through the standard flows as well. So some examples here, uh, you have, if you want to, the basic system you call run command, you just call the command and then it puts out the standard output, whatever it puts out. But you can do the same and get out a string separated line by line, which you can then treat, for example, with split, split lines or whatever function to use in, in, in Python to do that. Or you can put out a Python dictionary. Um, so you have these different functions in the graph scripting library that allow you to call graph commands in different ways and to have different kinds of outputs. This makes the call to graph modules really easy yeah, and so makes it easier to actually develop Python scripts around that. There's a series of other wrappers that you can use uh, which have been built kind of for, for as, as goodies if you wanted to allow easier calls to some, some tasks that are often needed within GRASP. So for example, creation of a new GRASP project location or listing, for example, whatever vector maps you have in your, in your map set, etc. All the scripts that are part of the GRASP source space and that used to be shell scripts have been rewritten to this new Python library in GRASP 7. And as Mark has said, if you use the GRASP modeler, the graphical modeler, you can actually program graphically a script which will then use the Sprite Python scripting library as its base. Now, the Python scripting library that I just presented is very easy to use for very basic scripting, but it ha does have some, uh, let's say, uh, disadvantages. It does not give you a low-level access to GRASP-GIS functions or data. You only get access to the GRASP modules as such. And in a certain way, it's not a very Pythonic way of, of, of programming when you use the, the Python script language. It's a very simple scripting approach and it does not really encourage the user to, to, to really work within the, the Python paradigm. So as part of a Google Summer of Code project, um, a new library was developed called PyGraph, which has two layers to it if you want to. The first layer can be seen as a sort of a replacement of the Python Graph scripting library, which thus functions to call Graph modules. And the second allows a lower level access to the GRASP GIS API via the C-type uh, Python library. This allows to integrate, let's say, both Python's programming philosophy with the GRASP philosophy, let's say, much closer. So as an example here, you have the access to, to modules, the, the first layer I spoke about, so you can create objects out of GRASP module calls and then handle them in classical object-oriented ways. You can set flags or, or, or parameters on the way and then call your, your model that way. You can also actually create shortcuts, Python shortcut calls, which then really <coughs> make your Python code almost look like GRASP code you call the gregion module exactly with the name gregion or the vinfo, v.info as v.info, etc. So that is a way to allow people also to, to, let's say, use Python scripting but still stay within the known realm of GRASP module call. So interesting difference to the, the GRASP scripting library is the fact that modules are treated as objects and then you can play around with them in, let's say, a more Pythonic way. However, output handling is not as easy as it just takes the output as a standard output from, um, from the modules. And so you already have to know a bit more about how to handle that in order to be able to use that. Currently, the two libraries coexist. And in a very, let's say, very subjective, my personal simplified differentiation of the two, I would say the first one is a very let's say GRASP is user-oriented library, which allows them to start scripting, whereas the second is a bit maybe a bit more Python-oriented, which allows people who, who, who like Python to use GRASP in a more sophisticated way. Mm. 
the second layer of the PyGrass library allows a much lower level access to, to the, the grass functions and grass data. It uses C type to access the, the grass C API. And it kind of combines the ease of Python programming with the performance of the grass C API. So you can actually really get the great performance that Marcus was just spe speaking about through Python uh, accessing the actual uh, uh, C libraries there. There's different packages, but notably raster, vector, and general GIS, let's say, handling and, and, and more, more generic tasks. Just a very quick example here. Here you have a, an example of, of dealing with a, a vector map, a point map, which you can just open and then here first task is just look at how many points do we have. We then create a new point, which we can then add to that map. So very easy to actually add new elements to maps uh, in a, a Pythonic way. But you also have access, for example, you can iterate over geometric, geometric features within, within the map and you have access to specific functions such as buffering, such as overlays, etc., which then use the actual C-based grass function behind the scenes to, to then apply these functions. So, again, difference between the two Python APIs is one is really, let's say, a scripting, allowing people to change grass commands very easily. The second is more of a Python access to grass. Finally, for those who, who really want to go down into the code, there's obviously the, the C API, which has known over 30 years of development. Parts have remained, as I've already said, extremely stable over the period. So it's quite interesting to see with what quality the, the, the initial functions were often programmed. And, but there's, I mean, there's been tons and tons and thousands of additions on the way. I've just selected a few of them to highlight how things have evolved. So you had the introduction of floating point and null support in GRASS-5, the whole new vector library, including the network tools that Marcus showed um, in GRASS-6, and the whole performance optimization, large file support, and much better cross-platform us usability in GRASS-6-7, I think now by GRASS-7, we can really say that the Windows port of GRASS is stabilized as well, um, much more than, than it might have in the past. There's three main core lib libraries. Again, the general fundamental operation is as a disk library. You have the raster and the vector libraries, but there's many, many other libraries. I won't list them all here, but you can have specific mathematical calculations. You have treatment of satellite imagery, displaying map, et cetera, et cetera. There's a consistent naming scheme across the libraries now, which really allows you to very quickly identify from which library within this whole GRASS CI API the functions come from. There's obviously a host of different data structures that are, are, are really specific to, to GRASS uh, and, and just needs. Um, in there. So you can have a look at the programming manual to have really the details, obviously, of this, this C API. But just some ideas of what that looks like, you know, one here treating a vec vector map and uh, going through it point by point, for example, or in the bottom here, the fact of going through uh, raster data. Quite interesting, the discussion about the, the fact that OTB doesn't allow row-based access to, to raster. Grass actually allows you different types of access to raster data, either row-based or segment-based, etc. cetera. Um, so this is allows quite flexibility also in terms of how you want to access and how you want to deal with, with raster data. Just as a final note, um, Grass allows very easy user interface creation. You just define the different elements that you need in your user interface, and you get both a command line interface and a graphical interface automatically uh, back out of that. Final note, all the examples I've shown of running Grass from different programming languages, you have to be within, let's say, an environment set up for Grass usage. So either you launch the startup script or you can do that manually, <coughs> and Grass also encourages people to really use a series of coding standards and these are all listed here in the submitting page. So that was it and enjoy GRASS 7.